really compact and challenging layout with all the different surfaces that characterise great street circuits. Rihanna? Good morning, Scafie. It was all about Cam Waters in the Monster Energy Mustang yesterday. He clean swept both practice sessions. He's got good form here in Townsville. He's had two wins, four pole positions, eight podiums. He'll be looking to capitalise on yesterday's form those who had a great day to those who maybe didn't. And for Red Bull, it wasn't quite the same speed that we saw out of them from Darwin. So they're buried just around the edge of the top 10 looking to move forward. For Shell V Power Racing, they were very much mid-pack yesterday, about 16th and 17th in practice times. And for the team that created all the headlines up in Darwin, Premier New Line Racing, they were 20th and 22nd in Friday practice and certainly searching for some speed. So how will it all play out in this qualifying session? Thank you, Ree. Thank you, Chad. Interesting day yesterday. I got to spend some time down in the lane in practice number two. Two 40-minute practice sessions yesterday. On screen there is Matt Stone of Matt Stone Racing and Nick Quirk out in the background and the Bendix cars just re-signed an extended contract with that team early in the season. But a lot of car fiddling going on. A couple of puzzled looks. In fact, more than a couple. A lot of puzzled looks yesterday from a variety of people. Uh, and we just covered off what was going on down there at the Shell V Power Racing Team. Just to reiterate, Cam Waters did a wonderful job yesterday from Jack LeBrock and Thomas Randall. Mark Winterbottom has had terrific success here over the years. Will Brown, our championship leader, in fourth position. 18th championship event in Townsville. Races 39 and 40 here now. They've been coming since back in 2009. Enormously popular event. This is Boost Mobile qualifying. It's a short, sharp session. The focus is always pace, but we're going to keep a very close eye on those that make it into the top 10 because there is a top 10 shootout to come and that'll determine the final positions going into our 88 lap race today. We're back in enduro mode, 250 kilometres. And it'll be all about strategy and pace and managing a very complex racetrack, managing tyres and managing fuel. Cam Waters, the fast man yesterday. Now opening his account strongly in quality. Will Brown's done a 13-8 off the bat. He's got a 108-point lead in the championship. He leaked, it leaked a little bit of that margin in the Northern Territory, Mark. These guys were quick yesterday, though. Both cars across the garage at Tickford. They certainly were, and that's a great response there by Thomas Randall. So we pick up on the curb there at turn six from Mark Winterbottom. And the way that you use that curb and the way that the car gets across there, and then as you run out of road, trying to get down to turn seven without doing what Mark's just done there in terms of the rally cross. It's a very interesting and fast piece of road that there's time to be made, but also easy to make a mistake there. We saw a couple of big moments there yesterday. Ryan Wood in particular was almost in the fence. So Brody Kostecki now has made the benchmark number as a 13-6-1. He's gone to P1. Keep an eye, though, on Brock Feeney. Very strong in the Northern Territory with back-to-back -back victories. He's currently position eight, but he's gone faster in the first two sectors of the racetrack, and he's triggered off a little bit of wheel spin out of that final corner. And what has that done? Will Brown moves it up now, one spot into position number four. Andrew Di Pasquale, a 13-5, quickly dropping in behind. Only five one hundredths behind was Feeney, but now Matt Payne splits them. So Di Pasquale, who was a winner here on the Sunday last year, Payne Cam Waters back with a 13-5. It is ridiculously tight at the top. Positions one to five in 2,800 metres of racetrack is only seven one hundredths of a second in the first blast. That is extraordinary, isn't it? 0.07 separates the top five cars. Waters deep Squally Payne, and now Jack LeBrock has knocked them all off by 0.02 of a second. So LeBrock does a 13.51. Waters 13.53. Deep Squally a 5.4. A 5.9, Feeney a 5.9, five cars now 0.08 apart. Great job, Jack LeBrock, backing up what he did yesterday to be the second fastest. So LeBrock at the moment, number one from Waters, from Di Pasquale, from Payne, Feeney, Kostecki and Randall are back in the garage and Thomas in there at Tickford. And Tom Moore on the radio, followed by Will Brown, Chaz Mostert, Andre Heimgartner. Yeah, it's not too bad, like... Definitely didn't have the tyres there for the first lap. Um, but yeah, the second lap was taking a little longer than what it wanted. Um, maybe we lost the rear a little bit, but yeah, front's not too bad. Like it, I don't, I don't want to go curl in the front, but yeah, just that much of loading space compared to when we had that other frigging. We're looking at listening to Jack LeBrock, Tom Moore on the other side of that conversation, his engineer. And it's the age-old challenge that Mark Larkin was describing before, and we've had many of these conversations. <laughs> James Courtney, that was a feel-of-gauge margin between the left rear guard and the concrete wall. It's what do you want to give up? 
if you want to improve something, you disturb another aspect of the performance of the car. Now, Courtney's done well here. If you go all the way back to the beginning of activity at this racetrack in 2009, James was the man. He's down the bottom of the order at the moment. I think that's about to change in the Snowy River Caravan's entry. And he moves it up nine spots into position number 15. So LeBrock's got two one hundredths of a second. Best part of two thirds, three quarters of the field are back in the garage at the moment. Check this out on the replay. What do you reckon? Yes, yeah. probably. <laughs> I don't know. 12 mil. <laughs> Certainly that mirror looked like it was in plenty of danger, didn't it, as it yeah. was sliding through turn 10. It's one of the great aspects of this racetrack, the bumps through that fast right-hander, and like I was explaining before, the little lift that David Reynolds had to have when we looked at his data, and that's a really high-level piece of driving to get through there, and sometimes you can get through there flat on a brand-new tyre. Now, while we were talking and somewhat out of cycle with the rest of them, Nick Perkett just jumped up into position number 10. And that's where the focus lies in this conversation at the moment because the margin between really everyone from position 6, Brody Kostecki on a 13-6, pretty much all the way down into the mid-teens, no one. I mean, you could jump up or you could be pushed down in a real hurry there. Yeah. So the, the margin across the top... 12 cars at the moment is just a little over 0.2 of a second with seven minutes remaining. And now I know you hate this game. No, I'm not playing it. Okay. But the game at the moment is Nick Percap with a 13.73. I don't think that's good enough to stay in. So at the moment, a 13.6 in sixth, which is the point you just made with Kostecki, that's a 13.61. He's currently sixth. What number do you need to do to ensure you're in the Boost Mobile top 10 shootout? hard to tell us what the track conditions look like. This is one of the tracks that we go to where it does change in its personality day on day. There's been a lot of construction vehicles on the racetrack, been a lot of work undertaken in this Reed Park complex in the recent weeks. And it gets quicker and quicker. You've got to be really careful you don't end up tuning to the wrong day, to early practice when it's dusty and dirty and slippery. Focused here on the championship leader, Will Brown, down at turn two, pushed pretty wide down there. He's down in eighth position at the moment. They won't feel safe with that number against that car. One in 13.7 at the moment. Very different conditions. Very windy from the southeast. It was yesterday as well, but we had solid cloud cover yesterday. There's a little bit more patchy sunshine here and there, as you can see in the background for today. When Garth was standing next to me yesterday in conversation, Mark, we were talking about this place. Just the work rate is yeah. extreme. 28 gear changes per lap. It's at the top of the table on the tour in personal exertion from that standpoint. And there's a little bit of a rest from turn 13 down to turn two, but the rest of it is high vigor. Yep, even the main straight's got that kink at turn one, although it's flat and reasonably easy to get through. And Thomas Randall has just gone to the top. Excellent job, Thomas Randall. 13 5 0. Knocks LeBrock off by 0.01. So Randall, who you said earlier in the session has had great pace through the course of the weekend. Will Davison comes up 10 positions to be eighth. Richie Stanaway comes up six, oh, eight positions, but he's only 13th. So there's still that number of a 13.72, which is now Mostert. So Perkett's been popped out. Mostert now on a 13.72 is on the cusp. Well, Team 18 guys had a car inside the top three in practice times yesterday, but for David Reynolds, not working, is it? Down in 23rd, they just put a new set of pedders, shocks and springs in the rear of this car. Asked Adrian Burgess, what is it that he's chasing? He said, everything. They did an engine change too. They were having some troubles yesterday. Mark Winterbottom had a strong day, and uh, David didn't have such a great day. Heingartner was solid yesterday. The, they did a lot of mileage with the BJR cars. In fact, Andre's just jumped up nine positions. And he's come up into position number three, and they've gone a completely different way philosophically with the setup of their four cars this weekend because they've had reasonable race cars. They've often practiced okay, and then they've fallen in a hole in qualifying, and then digging out of that is a horror story. Images of Brock Feeney on screen. He's position number seven at the moment. He's got to find the ridiculously tight margin of 0.09 of a second. And look where he sits in that field at the moment on the totem. It's just crazy. Well, when he did the original time, I thought he could put it away. I thought it was done. But now that he's in seventh, there's no way you can do that. And have a look, when you get to Will Davison, he's in ninth, so he's just in the 10. It's 0.12 of a second. Yes, yeah, Gaffey Feeney, obviously that was a great time he did. 
not a happy enough with the car. I turned my back, I didn't see, but I reckon it was quick. Looked like a front anti roll bar chain. So a little tweak to that car. They need, what'd you say? 0.09, nothing. Yeah, it's, it's so barely, tight, isn't it? Yeah, Chaz Mostert on board with him. In the mobile one off the century. It's all about trying to get and guess these trajectories over the top of the curbs right there as well. This is the long load through the right-hander and it's cranked sideways on him through 9.10 for Chaz Mostert. No sooner than you almost brush up against the wall on the exit, then you've got to try and just stop the car and arrest all that pace down Three 11. Minutes. And then you're loading up that left rear tyre again, which once again just broke away ever so gently. They like to have that car in a slight oversteer condition to make sure that it's pointy on the turn in qualifying because that's where the pace is. And Austin. that has been good enough to go to the top on a 13-4. So we rode with Chaz for the majority of that and he's in by 0.05 over the top of Randall. So that was a great lap. But how loose was it in a couple of places? He had to really chase that car. You couldn't do that for more than a handful of laps. So the focus with not much time remaining. At the top of the table is Mostert, but look down here at the bottom. Davison is just squeaking in at the moment, and the championship leader is just out. Beyond position number 10, we've got Brown, Perkett, Stanaway, Evans, Wood, Golding, followed by Fullwood, Winterbottom, Hill, and Courtney. They're those that are trying to get in. Heingarten has come back into the lane. And Ryan Walkinshaw keeping an eye on things after his charge. Chaz Mostert has gone to the top. And he's done a great first sector. So that number in the first sector there again, about trying to phase the time based on getting the first sector right. Mostert didn't do a very good job on his opening lap in the first sector, but he finished the lap off so superbly to be faster. So there's a bit of learning still going on for Mostert. He, he won't improve the time on this lap, but there's certainly some gains to be made if he can make those three sectors work. Finney's fastest in sector one, Mostert in sector two, Kostecki fastest in sector three. Can Will Brown dig himself out of this hole? Now, Nick Perkett's to be observed here as well because he's just done a 21.8 in the first sector. It's a personal best for him in sector one as we go inside the Walkinshaw garage. Here he is in the Bendix entry. You get a read on his second sector split in just a tick. Now, he's sitting in 12th. He's only got to find the tiniest of margins, a few millimetres for him to be able to squeak into the 10. He's backed it off in that sector, so he's, he's going to have another go. So he's got 48 seconds remaining, and he'll be looking to optimise the performance of this now. So this is now an all-out attack for Perkett. What's Randall got for us? Because he's currently on a personal best first sector. So Cam will give you the second number. The second number is right there. In fact, it's his best seconds. yet in terms of his cumulative number at the end of sector two. The inside curb just unsettles the car and slides. Now Cam Waters has just punched out a 13-4-1 with personal best in the first and third sectors. And he's got the tiny crazy margin of three one hundredths of a second. So it's Waters, Mustard, Randall, Mustang, Mustang, Mustang. And Randall has now split them and moves up with that lap that we witnessed up into position Check two. Closed, exit. The, next the session is now closed. There are people on their laps to be completed. Golding has just moved up six spots into position 11, and he hasn't quite got there by two one thousandths of a second. Is there anybody else in the list? The reigning champion is 10th. Brody Kostecki now is on the cusp, and Will Davison goes right to the top by 12 10 thousandths of a second. Unbelievable. Beautiful job. His teammate also jumped up into position five. So Will has done a 13-4, double one four. He's got one one thousandth of a second margin. Will Brown didn't get there in the end. Will Brown gone. And Feeney is 10th. So has anyone got a lap to finish? Because Feeney is currently the one on the cusp. Kostecki's been jumped out. He's 11th now. So what happens? Is there anybody out there, Crompo, that can still improve? Richard Harris, very happy with that performance from Will Davison, George Commons in the uh, down in the pit garage there at Erebus. A oh, gee whiz, that's wow. remarkable. When I look across those top five drivers, Will Davis, Cam Waters, Thomas Randall, Chaz Mostert, and Anton Di Pasquale, we haven't even broken a one-tenth of a second margin. That's right. Unbelievable. There it is, confirmed for you on screen.
So Will Davison, nice work over Cam, who was the fast man in both practice sessions yesterday. Thomas Randall reconfirming yesterday's pace. Chaz Mostert, they've smartened that car up overnight. Anton Di Pasquale moved up right at the very end into position number five. LeBrock Heimgartner forward. That's a fine performance. So two of the BJR cars in there. They've cured some of their qualifying ills, followed by Payne and Feeney. But missing out, as you can see, Kostecki, who was on the podium last time out in the Northern Territory. Golding, who was battling yesterday. Tiniest of margins. There'll be a million tails that go with these stories. Uh, followed by Brown. He'll be frustrated with that. Percat Evans, Stanaway, 